sala de saibe. Dicha de ese caso, fue mi casa. Ni en buena voz. Ya. Es un very blessed day for me, la mujer. Porque es que me, I went job hunting in town. While I was there, the book of 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 the This is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I belong. In God's system, in God's system, and it was now put on for the beautiful opportunity of me being here today. As I said, I'm not going to be long. I'm just going to share a little piece with you guys. You guys are amazing. This one, this one is called Dreamer. Dreamer, Dreamer is in Ipopa. It goes like this. I can see the light and the future is bright Cause I'm a dreamer Cause I'm a dreamer I can see the light and the future is so bright Cause I'm a dreamer Cause I'm a dreamer I can see the light and the future is so I had a dream. I dreamed that the whole world came to visit me. They wanted to see how I live. They wanted to know my goals. They wanted to know my dreams, my fears, my fate, and my culture. They told me that I'm a seraph. I said no. I remembered my sins. That's because how could they say I'm a kind of an angel? The moment came. I started to fear God. I started to remember how the youth of today had abandoned our culture as Amakosa. They told me about technology. They told me about HIV and AIDS. They told me about teenage pregnancy, drugs, alcohol, and respect. I remembered the word respect in I asked myself, where is it? But I knew we've lost it. Senzani, Senzani, I shouted, I screamed, my heart was full of anger. I remembered the things that are hurting my Africa, the youth. It is all about us. I mean, books are written, presidents have spoken, parents warned us, but still, we don't listen. Where is respect, love, fear, faith, and Ubuntu? My world, my Africa. Then a temper that someday change is gonna come upon us, and as the youth, and the change is gonna happen along with respect. I am the dreamer. Yeah. That you settled down and you found a girl and you married now. I heard that your dreams came true. Guess she gave you leave. I didn't give to you. Oh, friend, why are you so shy? Like you to hold back Oh, hi from the light I hate to turn out out of the blue Uninvited, but I couldn't stay away I couldn't fight it I hope you see my face And that you be reminded that for me It isn't over Never mind Sometimes it hurts instead. Yeah. 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 Ye
and so he found that it's a poem called "Blood Stained and Littered with Petals." Blood stained and littered with petals. I gave myself whole. Fully bloomed, petals splendid, sweetly scented to pervade your atmosphere with love so that every breath you took was pleasant. I was tender. <clears throat> I was tender. Blood for my source of being, I was yours to care for. Yet you chose to pluck my petals. Playing the game, he loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. I stayed screaming, I love you, I love you, but my cries drowned in the deep of your insecurities. Grief ravaged, I stayed, hoping that the last petal would prove that I did love you after all. <coughs> petal after petal, you tore me into pieces, yet I didn't mind the sacrifice, for I presumed that in doing so, you, my love, would heal. For I knew that you, my love, were once a rose in the hands of another. I just hoped that you understood that a rose so tender does not deserve such violence. I guess you had forgotten that a rose in its glory bears, has thorns too, now I'm just a thorny, now I'm just a thorny twig in your hands. My petals trampled on the ground, yet you still refuse to let me go. No wonder your, your hands are plagued with petrifying blood. And no wonder your blood, no wonder blood and petrifying wounds plague your, plague your hands because caressing has now turned into head. You've traded a sweet scent for a stage of rottenness. Please handle me with care, because in this state, I'm, not, I'm good not only for the pricking, but also for the weeping. Oh, I long... Jeez, I'm nervous, eh? I don't know. If I'm this nervous, I don't know about Nomi. <laughs> I believe she's more nervous than I am. You know, that finally, you know, um, the work that she's been uh, doing for Ikasheli, and then the heart as well and soul being poured onto it is finally going to be viewed by these amazing and beautiful people. Um, without wasting time, I would love to welcome everyone. Uh, we got no Ayana, Sevens, who's still welcome there? Thank you. Okay. No, no, yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to lift your hand if you don't feel welcome yet. But someone is going to do the official welcoming. And why are you here and looking really beautiful? Good afternoon, everyone. I don't want to do this now. <laughs> I don't want to do this now, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who took their time out of your busy schedules and your money to come here and your money for the ticket and came here to be with us, to enjoy the stay with me. Some of you, I don't know, some of you don't even know me, but they decided to come. I really appreciate that. I'm not going to say much about the moment. As you are watching, keep questions, comments, and whatever. Whatever you're going to ask him, you have to ask me. He said I must respond on his behalf as the director of the film. So it's a long one, one and a half hour. So enjoy, let's do this, let's do this. Uh, before you sit down, man. Uh, before you sit down, just quickly um, share briefly um, why the story specifically, why do we have to spend an hour, an hour and a half just watching it? What is it about it? What really inspired you to actually do this piece? All right. Um, All right. Uh, this, is a, this, this story is very close to my heart. I'm an African, I'm proud. Everybody who knows me knows how much proud I am to be African. So it's a story I've always wanted to tell. I feel the pain when I see people die for no reason, when people die because they are not, they of a different nationality. I do a lot of traveling, especially to African countries. So the reception I get when I get there is different from what we give other foreign nationals in our country. So that's what inspired the story to come true. And also the spirit of Ubuntu, 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 you are here. When you leave home and come to a different space, it's because there's a reason you are doing it for your own family. Most of us here are from the Eastern Cape. They are not born in Cape Town. We came here for a better life. No work from a job or from wherever for a better life. It's the same with other people who come to our country. They come in for a better life. And when we kill them, we're not killing only them, we're killing their families who depend on them. Remember, you sitting there, there's a family back home that's depending on you. 
when you watch this movie, have that in mind. There is someone out there depending on the little scent that you come with. So when you kill, when someone kills you, what would your mother, your grandfather, your dogs, your uncles, your kids, your everybody who depends on you do? So that's what inspired this story. As I said, I want to talk much about it after you've watched, but yeah, that's what it's based on. It's based on, on killing of innocent people because they are not South Africans. It's based on knowing that in South Africans we also travel to other countries and how do we want to be treated? Yeah, I think I'm done. No, that was very bad. I feel like we can do better than that. It's, it's a very sensitive topic. It's a very sensitive topic. I mean, as South Africans being here, you know, um, it's a very sensitive topic. And then someone to say, I'm going to write a story about it. You know, it takes some serious boldness and courage to write such a story. You know, and we really appreciate you, Sister Loma, for such a beautiful story. South Africa's Institute for Security Studies said the Public Violence Monitor has recorded over 200 xenophobic attacks and related incidents over the last eight years. Over 330 people have died across South Africa. I wonder what you've seen her that makes you ignore me. Me? Yes, you. Sometimes I look at you and I see a very good man with terrible taste. Yes, plenty, plenty. Now water, water, poo poo in the room. Is he eating now? No, no. No eating? Yes. Okay, since when did this start? Today, today. Today, you're right. No, right. No, 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 you listen to me. You listen to me. It is as I have said. Oh, yes. They killed Ikeme Fula. I am the one on the field here. I am the one who no. feels the pinch and everything. For the embassy to call me. And if the embassy is scared, I am scared too. I am scared. That man, wait till you say this kind of battle, Nasirin Jambayi. This blood Unless you come out here with your South African bitch. What is your you dying grandson? Who? Mm. Mm. the first blood. Now let's burn this place down. Mm. Stop it! Nami, Nami, you are God, Deva. You know they hear you and they come, come out wide. I said, what? They drive you. No, it's it, 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 We'll give a chance to the audience um, to share their thoughts and their understanding of the movie. Um, if <laughs> I think for me, it's not even about my understanding, but the respect and the deep love I have for this, my sister, for being that brave, being that bold to address a topic that is 
so sensitive uh, that a lot of people don't want to talk about, that is so real, and that can help us, you know, to grow more in Africa. Love thy neighbor. <coughs> Unity in Africa. And a lot of other things are said. We have the African Union, we have a lot of, you know, things going for us in Africa. However, for me, the ripple effect of one action, how it can affect so much, you know, what people are doing. And I'm glad, you know, I, I was saying to my sister here, that I'm glad we've got the younger ones here. Because it might be too late for some of us, you know, to change our perception, our ignorance, uh, I don't know, whatever else we all have. But I'm glad I've got them here, or we've got them here, you know, to hopefully, I'll, I'll be interested in what they will, will say, and hopefully they are the future who can help build Africa. South Africa, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Congo, we have so much, you know, going for us in Africa. However, you know, we allow ignorance, hatred, and a lot of other things to be the bottom line for us. So I think for me, it's just to say thank you. In my language, we say Oshé. Oshé For just doing, you know, so much. I, 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 and I know you're probably thinking, this place should be full. But you guys should count yourself lucky yeah. that you're the first to see this. But well, you are the ambassadors for her to help share the conversation, you know, with others on something like this. I'm hoping, you know, and I, I'm prophesying, I'm not a prophet, I'm not a pastor, but I'm prophesying into your life that this will be the beginning of greater things. That you'll be like, wow, your generation to come will thank you. Because, yes, it's not about solution when you open for me, because we're still experiencing this here. I do a lot of work in the community, and sometimes I'm like, why am I doing this, or what am I doing this for? But you help validate <coughs> You help validate that. So thank you, and I hope you know, this will go to places you know, that you will be surprised yourself. Keep your feet on the ground. That's the only thing I want. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Because you could get distracted. There's a lot out there. There will be people who will go, why? It could have a negative effect as well. So stay focused. You know why you've done this. And God will guide you and give you the grace to be able to send us a message you know, to others, the power that is be and to able to change lives of generation to come. Because that's what it is. What legacy are you leaving? So this is a legacy that will start and multiply into many things. Thank you. Uh, this, was, uh, this was an awareness that we as Africans, we need to be conscientized and to be taught who we are why are we calling ourselves Africans? Mm -hmm. And whereas we call ourselves Africans, and then afterwards we don't know that we are Africans. We don't know the brotherhood. I mean, I think um, the slavery hurt us a lot, and now we don't know who we are. And it, it, uh, you have been in this journey. Each and every time you do something, you surprise me. And I do not know why I'm missing this. But your work speaks volumes. You must keep up the good work. You must keep up the teachings. Our kids really need these lessons. But I must also stress that 
adults also need these yeah. reasons. Little knowledge is very dangerous, very, very dangerous. If you do not know, you will end up doing something that you might regret later, some might not regret it. But this is top-notch the strength, the courage, and the bravery. Um, I'm from the West, I'm from America. In the, in the West, they don't see us as South African, Nigeria. They see us as one. Yeah. You are all Africans. When they treat us, they treat us as one. If they belittle us, they do the same. And then we come home, and then we do the same to each other. So then, where do we go from here? Um, thank you. We're coming here to reset you down here from the States. And for a minute, you're giving me hope that my son has a home here that is not going to be killed. We have to start from somewhere. This is a call in your life. Will you take him the step to do it? Like my sister said, so people are not going to like what they're doing. But it's not about them. It's what God has gifted you to do. And he's going to see you through it. Because he has given that to you. That's your conviction. And you're going to do it. This is going to take you places. Not because of who you are, but because of what God has put in you to do. Yeah. I want to say thank you. I'm, I'm sitting and I thank my sister for bringing me this up. I almost didn't come. But thank you. You don't know what this means. It goes a long way. Yes. Thank you so much. What you have done, and uh, it is so exciting to see uh, Abando Wazio, you know, going international and doing great things, yes. collaborating with other people. It's, it's, it's an encouraging thing for Abando Wazio, aspiring actors or artists uh, like you. Um, you know, when I was watching the, the movie, I kept on thinking to myself, when am I going to see South Africa? Um, because the movie is about South Africa and, yeah, Nigeria. and Nigeria. I kept on asking myself, when am I going to see South Africa? When am I going to see maybe some scenes down in South Africa? And the only scenes that I could see in South Africa were the ones that were on the news. Yeah. And my, 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 my thoughts about when am I going to see South Africa and that being, um, that not being met, on me not being able to see South Africa, got me thinking. <clears throat> I asked myself, was it a logistical decision that you did not take any shots in South Africa? Or was it, um, was it an artistic decision because you wanted to showcase something that we as South Africans are not exposed to? Obviously, if it was going to speak about South Africa, we'll speak about how much we, we feel like our jobs are being taken, da, 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 a narrative that we all know. And I found myself thanking you or whoever decided that it was not shot in South Africa. And all of it was shot in Nigeria. It gave us a perspective that we don't think about when we take to the streets or when we meet our African brothers and we, we want to fight with them for whatever reason. And I am so happy that you took it there and you gave us a perspective that we did not uh, have, have. And you, you put us into lives and characters that the next time when I go and fight my brother, what kind of uh, domino effect is it going to, to make? How far is it going to reach? I'm just thinking for myself and I'm not thinking for the rest. So I, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Whether it was by design or by mistake, 
it has got a very big effect and it gives us a different view that which is a which is not a conversation that we, we get we have when we are having that conversation yeah. amongst ourselves so thank you very much for that. My friend, number one, thank you for keeping us on the edge. Yes. <laughs> All the reason why I stopped watching TV, recycling of something that is not helping us as Africans. Yeah. And number three, thank you for showing us your thoughts through action. Because sometimes thoughts, people think thoughts are hidden, but action will tell us what you were thinking. Thank you for the vision that you have for Africa, you and the team. This was an amazing film. And I think it's about time that we tell our stories. And I'm telling you now, uh, I see this project going big. I see this project fighting in schools, in high schools, in universities, you know, everywhere. So thank you. And of course, I miss out to and it wasn't um, says Noms, I have a that we go through, you understand? We've seen Nigerians being dragged out of their houses, being dragged out of their shops into the streets, you understand? So, Tina, we've seen this a lot. And for you guys to be able to shoot the film, it means a lot. Because I think at some point, these are the stories that actually really needed to be told, you yeah, understand? And for us, Tina, from my own perspective as an actor, uh, to you as an artist, I know what you went through. I know what it took for you to be able to be in this, like, this spot that you were in, to be able to portray that character, so that you can tell the story that we can see it in, in a way, uh, So, since Noms and Fulubuti, thank you very much uh, for the good work, and may you keep on doing the good work. All right, thanks. The only thing that I would say to you, my friend, you need to grow smarter and wiser. You are an inspiration. And as the elders that are here, I think we need to, to teach our young ones the humanity. Because it's, it needs the humanity. And when I see you in that film, I cry because I know where you come from, all your acceptance, but today you are here and I hope you are going far. Um, I just wanted to say you have found, I didn't know you, I'm sorry, but today you found a fan in me. Um, my name is Zandine. <laughs> my name is Zandi Lemekis and I'm also an actress, but uh, currently I'm an applied theatre practitioner, so I'm working in community development work. But to long sentences, this work. Um, I want to challenge the space, Ayanda, because there's a lot that we need to unlearn as black people. I'm going to put it out like that. There's a lot that we need to unlearn, especially from Abandu Anabetu. Ayala is running a program here where Wednesdays and Fridays, he brings in little kids to come and watch movies. 
And we are also invited Friday evenings to come and also view some screenings, documentaries and otherwise. We need this for Abandana Beit. Not it in a cool, but for our kids. You know? So that they shift from what they watching on our daily news of which it's not assisting us, which you put it over there that it's not helping us grow with that. It's not helping us moving forward. We try our best with our organizations that we have here in Kailicha, where we work with schools, where we work with other, we partner with other organizations and are trying to, uh, oh, to uplift, to upskill, to assist Abandana Beto, but this is something that, it's the elephant in the room that we've been avoiding throughout. But unless she shine a light on it, that's when we know where we're going. Ute Dada over there, we don't know who we are. You're correct, that. A lot of us and our children do not know who they are. We adapt on Western culture. And we think that's who we are, but no. That is not who we are. Le, it's a move, I'm going to call it in tone. I'm a storyteller as well. So in tone, le um, and is a tata, and carry with me moving forward. Diabulela, sister. Diabulela to everybody who came today. Thank you so much. Okay, um, uh, I know a lot of people have said UTA is it always means like almost the same thing. So uh, now I'm saying the same thing. Good work. Now I need you to uh, uh, think, think 10 years back since so we 2010, when we started shooting the film in the same cave, man. And then when you answer your questions whatsoever, think about it and then tell me, yeah, and then tell me the difference between the acting you have then and the acting you have now. So, yeah. So think about that. And then when you answer your questions, when people will say, Lord, what difference were we going there? And then another thing, uh, that, 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 um, that we need to play in the Metro. Yeah, uniform, yeah, it's called uniform. So, I think it motivated you because it suits you. Oh, from the teaching you mind. And, and believe you me when I say, I'm not the only, I'm not the first person who's saying that. Even from the Bible, they said that. I, I know, I know, because it suits you. Think about being a nurse after I teach you. <laughs> Otherwise, um, a job well done with a project are cool, are cool, are cool. I liked it, I liked it. Because the three questions is, that I had were for Williams to start cool. Because when I was watching, um, I could be in, I was in Williams' shoes. I understood which in dollars are with Eza and everything. Otherwise, Uchopa, which I said hello and thank you for the project. Same with you. And then one last thing, man. Uh, I think for this project to go far, because I've heard people in the city, my year, my year, I think it must be in touch with Travel Road plus Noras and Phillips. They are good distributors. They can take this feeling. They can take this feeling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at the age of 15, when I saw you, Mama, for the first time, I saw you in my world, oh, Mama, so one day I would love to be, I would love to become like you, being independent, and I would love to become an actress like you, my dad. Because when I felt like I'm seeing actors for the first time who work with my dad, I thought I was dreaming. But no, I'm seeing people that really work with my dad. So I wish you all the best. In the next 10 years, I'll see myself successful in everything the world as you. Yes. 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 Yes.
thing is, and my question for me, I don't know if it's love for you, you know, but everything about you, like even eating your apple and what you produce and everything, I never expect anything less. So to me, again, teacher, like everyone said, good luck again. Thank you very much for the great content. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, you can go first. 10 oh, seconds. I want to say thank you. Great movie. They say, how do you cut down the biggest tree in your yard? You chop it every day, just two chops, one, two, three, four, five, and drop it. But eventually, you cut the tree down. This is what you've done. But it will be the beginning of cutting the trees down in the backyard of our minds with the youngsters that they grow. Because these big trees that are sitting there, they're wondering, how do we remove this? And so, secondly, now it's, now it's a question. Why is media not here? Why? Yeah, which media is that? Cape Town TV. And SABC TV. Because this is huge. It is huge. There should have been here. Maybe I'm at Ford as well. I knew about it. Yeah. But well done, keep it up. We'll talk more. Thank you so much. Hey, hey. Hello, everyone. Uh, Ian Desire. Can we give you another round of applause, please? This is, this is important work. This is the type of stories that we need to be telling. I know I'm echoing something, a lot of things that have already been said here. But I want to say this is important work and I'm glad that you made this film. Now people are talking about it being big and whatnot and I agree with that. My question to that is why is this not a movement? We have Operation Tudula which is basically a very polarizing uh, um, situation. This is a movement. This is this speaks to the core of, of, of things that like issues that we have in Africa, the division. Yes. We are busy discriminating each other on borders that are not even our own. In that meeting in Berlin, when they did the Indonesian border borders, we were not there. So I think this should be a move a movement on unity then. I know I might be asking a lot, but you know, you can do it. This should just turn into a movement because this is more than just a movie. These are issues that we need to be talking about. These are dialogues that need to be had. Anyways, thank you. Congratulations, Sis Noni. This is wonderful. It is very emotional for me. And um, it is coming at a time that I am clocking 20 years in South Africa and about to board my flight out of South Africa. Precisely because I have suffered chains of institutional xenophobia. Precisely because I feel broken when I think of my skill sets and my fight to want to be integrated and yet it is difficult for me to feel welcome. Now, now let's go to the movie. What, why, what did I saw? What did I see? I saw a low budget movie that has the potential to take over the world. I saw a movie that if it was produced by a white person would be on the Oscars. I saw a movie that if it was done by an American would have been a vast world. I saw a movie that if it was done by a European would have made instant millions. And so, behind that movie there are bigger questions that I think need a whole week workshop to unpack. There is the economic question, there is the political question. Um, when we say that Ikemefuna was killed. Who are the people that killed Ikemefuna? The people that killed Ikemefuna are people that perhaps don't have job and they feel frustrated. And so we need to answer that question. On the other side, who are the people who wanted to revenge Ikemefuna's life? They are unemployed people that have been depending on Ikemefuna. So on the two spectrums, when you talk of xenophobia, there is a subtle question of economic disempowerment. Dr. Moffet 
cannot kill Zandi because he's a doctor, he feels secure. Yeah. And so it's a very big issue. But there is also a question that South Africa and Nigeria, for every $10 that is spent in Africa, South Africa and Nigeria account for $4. And so the question of xenophobia is deep, is big. Is deep, is big. I don't want to go into conspiracy theory, but I'm beginning to believe certain things as I grow older. Now, but I will ask you a question. The movie is wonderful. I still, I was still going to ask, why did you kiss my brother? <laughs> I was going to ask that question. You were on the wild side. But, uh, but the good thing that I see in that movie that I want to tell to the um, artists and younger people here is first, I commend the fact that you brought Francis Doom. Now, that actor, Dr. Mofe, that played Dr. Mofe, is a big thing in Nigeria. To get him into a movie is not easy. In fact, Someone like me, even as a Nigerian with everything, it might take me a year, I will not be able to get to his peer. And so to get into that movie, you did very well. You understand? Even the backup actor, the brother of Ike Nefuna, is a big thing. And um, the other thing is that the economy, you, with all the infrastructure we have in South Africa, Nigeria movie is probably, the movie industry is probably the only industry that is making profits. And it's the only industry that was made by ordinary people from the ground. And so as South African artists, as South African producers, as South African writers, if you want to succeed as a black artist, as an artist of color, you have no option than to be partners with Nigerian artists. Because they have no, the one thing, why there is a media sensation against Nigeria because they are the only people that can produce their music at the backyard and tomorrow it is in New York. <laughs> and so they don't want you as a black man here. They want you to continue to be a lap dog to the white institutions. And so they make us feel we are enemies to ourselves. The first day I met um, our sister here, she said, until I partnered with Nigeria, I couldn't know where I was going in the industry. You have everything to gain. Nigerians is the only people that, if you lock them in the container, after five minutes, they will come out of the container and the <laughs> And so we have a lot. Economically, to partner, to, the Nigerian market is huge. 200 million people. But talking about a movie, I see a movie that need part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. I can talk to you tomorrow. I know. So I really I know. Because there is one who say my fee will increase. I bet for all the uh, information I'm giving to you, you will pay me now your family. But I will leave you that a solution. There is an organization in Kailicha called Workers One Media Production. Please, when you go to them, they do an annual movie festival. Tell the director, uh, Martin Jansen, that Comrade Barry sent you to the tomb and give him the movie. That's, that's what the journey is doing. We have connections. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, again. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to say this again for taking your time. Everybody has something to do somewhere. And, and your money to transport yourself here and buy the tickets. I think some of the people are going out, and it's fine. According to the, the planning and all that, this place was supposed to be full. But there's one thing I believe in life. Nobody is at a place that should not be. Yeah. So whoever was not here, they were not supposed to be here in this place. And to now these two people are gone. We respect them. I respect them for spending the time to come and be with us here. We don't have much time for me to say a lot because I can also I can talk. You all know that I can talk. Yeah. <laughs> but as for now, um, before I forget, oh here he is. The, this this gentleman over here, can everybody just clap for him? Now? <laughs> the reason why I want to acknowledge his presence, we grew up watching him on our screens. And you don't know how much it feels for me to be sharing with this.
Today I employed him. Yes. I employ, I, I grew up watching him, but now I'm his producer. How oh, does it feel? Yes. <laughs> So, which means he has been our inspiration. Thank you so much, Mutuam. I know you are a very busy person for spending time to come here and be with us. This means a lot to us. Uh, thank you so much, Nigerian. Okay, she's not here. Nigerians. I had a lot of Nigerians who were coming today, but uh, they're not here. But anyway, that's for another day. So, thank you so much. Thanks, 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 thanks. Okay, coming to some of the few questions that you were asked, brief, brief ones. Oh, before questions. Anyone who's here, a filmmaker and an actor and whatever, on the 25th, we have a what master class. They will know what I'm talking about. For whoever was here today, it's free. Bring your ticket. Okay. But for whoever was not here, it's going to be 50 rand. We bring it here, but on the other side of the classroom. Just wanted to announce that. But I will have the posters. Olga will spearhead the whole process. That is Olga, my son. He always say, don't mention me in your movies, in your videos. That is only my son, I love you. I'm happy now. Right, there's a question, before any other question, there's something important that Utupan has to mention there. He asked, I want to first tackle that one. Was it a decision or was it a choice? Or was it a artistic decision or a logistical decision? Uh, initially, an artistic decision. Logistically, it could have been, but it didn't affect much. The main aim I had for shooting this movie in Nigeria was to take our people in the shoes of these people. I wanted to be a foreigner, because I've been a foreigner. I'm always a foreigner somewhere. Yeah. And the reception I get is totally different from here. Mm -hmm. The first time I went to Nigeria, I mentioned Nigeria because of other countries. When, wherever I went, this is not a joke, wherever I went, when they hear my accent, I skipped the queue. I remember it was time for COVID and we had to line up to do. Nigeria is the same like here, guys. You queue up for everything. Like, like literally, you queue up for everything. But I would always speak on purpose so that they can hear I'm not. Oh, okay, we have yeah, our sister. Our sister, come now. Come, come, come in the front. You know, but that's something we don't do as our people. So that's the reason why I wanted to take the story over there. And the same thing I'm saying is that part two, part three, part what? When Zandi leaves this, she said, I want to go back home. Justice, uh, Ikemofuna deserves justice. The justice will be here. Justice. <laughs> justice will be here. <laughs> Zandi is coming here, Mufa is coming here, all of them, all of them, Kosi is coming here. So they will, the story does not end, then we have to end it. It doesn't end there. So yeah, that was the main reason for us to move over there. For, um, for me to show, to put myself in those shoes, it was a very scary moment, guys. If you see the, those nights, it was literally night. Two o'clock, three a.m., four a.m., we are still out there shooting. That scene, I, I was crying, sitting here, thinking how much I cried over there, because I was really scared when I walked out. They cut the other part where I'm running. And there were sounds of chaos and sounds of owls. You know what, how we feel about owls here? Yeah. <laughs> it was really in the jungle and it was raining, it was so cold, it was really scary. But yeah, I had to put myself through that to tell the story. So I don't know. But it, as well as man, how did you get money? Yeah. And how did you connect? Uh, firstly, the, do you want to know how much this movie cost to shoot? Eh? That was 500,000. Mm. That was the whole film made about a thousand. He mentioned something about um, Francis Dulu. Those people don't come cheap, eh? Yes. You have to pay a lot of money for them. And when we were shooting in Nigeria, we had to travel to Saldana, from here to Saldana to shoot. And then from Saldana back to Armanas to shoot. So all those costs were included in that. Uh, it was about a thousand years. And how did I get the money? <laughs> It's for me to know and you to wonder. It's okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. But, 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 but there was no funding. From, from, there was no funding. You know, uh, South African, South African funders don't fund South African filmmakers in South Africa. They would never fund you for going to shoot in Nigeria for what? So there was no funding there, but yeah, you know, when, when you really want to do something, you have to sacrifice here and there. We have to, yeah. If you come to my house and there's, there's only onion in the fridge, then you understand. Then we know. Yes. yes. If I don't have fuel on the road, I'll start, you'll understand. 
Okay, the other question was how to connect. Guys, connection is very easy these days. Use social media, it's there for your tools. How I got to know these guys, even before I went to Nigeria for the first time, I submitted my film on a Cabinet National Film Festival, which is in Nigeria. So I did a, an interview there on Instagram Live, I remember. So people were responding to that, and it's when they responded. That was like in 2020 or 2019. And we've been communicating since planning this project. So that's how I got to meet him. I did not know him. Filmmaking is very tricky. I send money to people I've never met. No. I send money to people I've never met in Nigeria. Being Nigerian, we know Nigerians now. We know how cool. You know, Nigerians, Nigerians, we are not people who run away from me. They are very smart. They are very smart. They can rob you while you're talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it happening. They can, they, can, they, can make, they can make you think you are not yourself now. But it goes back to getting to the, 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 the relationship, as I'm saying, it has been building up through the years. I ended up knowing the person before I even lay my eyes on him. We were communicating, we were talking, everything, everything. So they were also transparent. I also had to do a lot of background checks and a lot of other things. I remember the day after I sent the money and there were issues at the bank, they couldn't access it. And they thought I was playing them because they had to pay for something, their location, and I was really stressed. I was at work with five people who didn't see how stressed I was that day. And <laughs> it was so stressful because I'm thinking now, have I lost my money? You know? They haven't received, have they really not received it or they are lying to me, these Nigerians, because they are Nigerians at the end of the day. So it's the list that I took, but it's all it paid off. Yeah, so any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, before you thank me, there's a lady who has gray hair here. That's my aunt. Tell me how I me. That is my aunt. I should be here, I know, but she is my aunt. I was about to apply and send my uncles. You can. It is just a number. Uh, <laughs> she said something about, I'm telling this just briefly for, for a reason. She said something about when I was growing up. She reminded me of something. She's right. I was only 17, 16, 17 when I started to live with her. I didn't even know what I was doing. But she is calling. I would call it people of my age. I said to them, I write a story. My first story, I, my dad did make me angry of something. I wrote a story about it. That. that was my first story. And then when he wants to do that, God, oh my God, I hide in life. Oh, the time you said, who knows? Who, who, nobody knows what you are talking about. Now just shut up. So that, that's where it started. And when he talked about 2010, my first film as a producer, I made in 2010. Hey, shh. Yeah. Is it Cape? I don't know. Yeah, it was. Is it Cape? We, 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 we traveled with Lucipo from here in Cape Town. Yes. Okay. Because it was cheaper doing it that way. Use my father's house, my father's car, my father's money, my father's house, my father's food. So it was cheaper that way. The only money we need was transport, was fuel for the car to go there. We shoot it there, we didn't make it anyway. It's okay, but we learned from it. And it's the story we are going to shoot the story again now. Oh, I was so emotional when I sat here. If my father was still alive, he would be here now. In fact, my whole family, they called this morning, they were supposed to be here, but we prepared for a wedding next week of my brother, so they can't be it. When I first said to him in 2020, I'm traveling to Nigeria to do my first project in Nigeria, he said, Are you sure you can do it? Will you come back there alive? The last thing he said, If you die, they told those people I said, they will bury with it because I'm not coming to bury it. Now I had to make sure that nothing happens to me. I don't know how I was scared myself. But he said to me, but he said, my child, since 20 years, since 2000, you have been bombarding us with these Nigerian feelings. You have been in cities for us, forcing everybody to stay the whole night to watch. That is when I knew that this is like what you like to do. I'm giving you my blessings. Go out there. I don't know what to go. If you come back, if you die, it's okay. You will be dying doing what you love. So when I when I left now this time, my, my dad is not there. My mom said exactly the same thing. So what I'm trying to say, it's a journey. It's, it's nothing that happened. Nothing happened yesterday, okay, before yesterday. I've been on this.
for quite some time. I've lost money, I've lost this, I've lost that, but here I am. So, yeah. Okay, this is Dr. Mamake. I'm with Black Queen Africa. You all know her, Nomi, but she will introduce herself and tell us about for Ikemefuna. So, Black Queen, what's your full name? Nomi. Uh -huh. I'm Nomi Mzamane, but I'm known as Black Queen. I love to be known as Black Queen Africa. Uh, Ikemefuna, Ikemefuna is a film about a South African woman who lives and works in Nigeria. Uh, what happens is when she's there, the guy that she works hand in hand with, who is a South, uh, Nigerian who stays in South Africa, a legitimate businessman who stays here legally in the country, who is helping the entire community. She works at a clinic, there's always medical supplies, shortages. Ikemafuna always helps out in that. He pays money to the pharmacist for the whole month for us to access. So, because of the xenophobic attack, they killed him. Now, the mob is angry. The youths are angry because he was helping everyone. They want to pay revenge. Who are they are going to avenge? They want to build bury South African businesses there. And more than anything, there's one in their midst, the South African woman. She must die. So that's what the movie is about. And for you, what is the message you're trying to share? Who are you trying to speak to as well? The message is for all Africans. Because if you notice, Africans are all over Africa. In every African country, there's an African who's not originally biological from that country. Especially with South Africans. We are not going to talk about xenophobia in other countries. I've never seen it in other countries, but I've experienced it in this country. And Nigeria, because Nigeria is the, is the target. You know, it's so said that every foreigner in South Africa is called a Nigerian. Every foreigner is called a Nigerian. Yes, I know Nigerians are doing terrible things. But is Some. It, is it, but yes, you are right. But is it all Nigerians doing terrible things? Are South Africans not doing any terrible things? Are other Africans Some. in other Some. countries are not doing terrible things? Our prisons are full. Are they full of Nigerians? So the message I'm trying to bring you up is, is, is that when you do harm to anyone, when you kill of anyone, you're not killing that person. You are killing the entire community. You are killing the mother, who kills the siblings, everybody. If I can tell you in Cape Town, the population of Cape Town is filled with people coming from other provinces, not just Cape Townians, mostly from Eastern Cape. All those people, they left their homes for a better life in Cape Town. Every year in December, they go home. Every month, they send money home. All the time, the families come home. So, if a South African who comes to Eastern Cape, from Eastern Cape to Cape Town, what is the difference between that and the Nigerian who comes from Nigeria for better life in Cape Town? So, it's exactly the same. Now, imagine if, what I was trying to say to our people, what if it was me who was killed in Cape Town? I'm killed in Cape Town by Cape Townians coming from Eastern Cape. How would you have felt? So that is the message. Let's do our way with killing them. They could have done wrong things. They could have done whatever. There's, there's issue. If we have issues with our government, like an unemployment, let's not take the anger out on them now. Because there's one thing that our people don't know. All these people in the country legally, there's a communication between the two governments. When I travel to Nigeria, I go through a process. The reason why our director is not here today is because of the process. So there are processes. Let us not kill other people. If they do anything you don't like, it's okay. Reporting them to the government. We saw in the movie how that guy was taken by the police. That's how it should be done. But not killing a human being. Because if you kill that person, you're not killing only him. You're killing the entire nation. So character Zandili, how easy or difficult was you to go into that character? <laughs> It was very, With your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't very an easy, it wasn't much of an easy space. But because as an actor, you have to fit in in every character. I had to put myself in the shoes of a foreigner. Fortunately, I've been a foreigner in other many African countries as well. Right. As much as I was never treated badly, but I had to think back of the instances I know here mm. of foreigners, how they are treated for me to fit into that role. 
And my director has said I did it fairly well. You did. No, so you did <laughs> very, very well. So I think And so. being, you know, the producer as well, and acting, mm. because that must have been difficult. It was difficult. And also, there's another important factor that I've mentioned in there. The lady you see in the beginning, she's a Nigerian younger woman mm. who is so in love with this. Yes. But then come a South African, they're going to force for the South African. Why are our brothers complaining when the Nigerian brothers fall for their South African sisters and, and, and marry them? Mm. Because if you, if I were to stay in Nigeria, I stayed in Nigeria for years. So who must I date? Who must I get married to? Mm. Are there any South Africans I must date over there? So that, that, that kind of thing. So let's right. understand why they come and date our sisters and brothers here. I don't want to say it's about money because nobody has money, but it's mm. all about at some point in life you have to date someone, you have to be with someone, you have to get married. Uh, that woman is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a widow. So yeah. shall, shall she not marry now? She, must she come back home to get a woman? So I'm trying to send that message that let, let people be, let us live. Mm. This is our continent. Mm. But evil doers must be punished the correct way. But let's do away with killing other people. What were some of the challenges for you making the movie? Um, the biggest one was mm. me not in being in Nigeria when we were playing. It was back and forth of video calls, even when we were doing a uh, location. Okay. They have to do video for to me to you. show the place. <laughs> well, saying no, 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 not that one. Can we go to another location? So that was that communication issues. And look, the people that I worked with, I met them personally for the first time, as much as I've been communicating with them for years. So there were also kind of trust issues. A lot of Nigerians were dealing with here. Also on their side, they were worried, hey, this South African woman, I wonder if she's going to deliver what she said is going to deliver to us. So that's basically that. Otherwise, it was the distance. When I got there, things were not were ran smoothly. But the only thing that was a challenge is the rain. Ah, it rained. The rain you saw. The, yeah, the, when you saw, <laughs> so you called the when rain. When you saw the thunder, uh -huh. it was literally Real. raining. Oh, no. It wasn't part of the script, but it was raining, and we had to shoot because we were working on borrowed time. But that was awesome. <laughs> it, 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 I love that. We were so flipping, soaking wet and cold, but we had to. Another challenge: working hours. South Africans, they must know. In South Africans in Nigeria, there is no time to sleep. No time. We were shooting day mm -hmm. in, day out, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, and we came up with that. How was it like walking with Francis Dur? <laughs> I felt like a queen, you know. When they first sent me a picture of him, and they said he has agreed, I was like, Jesus, yeah. God. How could I get, because I grew up watching that guy. He's been 33 years in the industry. And he's a very humble person. And till this day, I want to tell you if you're an actor out there, Francis Duru, after 33 years, he still rehearses. Mm. He still, before acting, takes a script, let's go through the lines. Right. He still does that. If he can do that, who are you to think you're just going to march in there and shoot? So it was a very good experience. I learned a lot from him. He's a very cool a humble person for his for his uh, caliber for his position in the industry i have much respect for him and by the way he liked my acting uh, of course <laughs> will not, who will not love your acting i'm sure there's going to be more collaborations coming I, up I, for I, you. please my nigerian <laughs> brothers i need more now uh -huh. this is my dream more my yes, dad so. knew that i wanted to i used to say even if i can just be on set mm -hmm. that was like 20 years back wow so this film, you now. this film is a dream come true for me. That is why it's so close to my heart. So what support, if there's anybody out there, apart from you saying you want to go into other movies, you know, with other people, what sort of support, what other support do you think you need to promote a platform like this and share such powerful stories like this? Funding. There's one issue with filmmaking is, make, is money to shoot. There is money out there for these projects, but we don't get our hands mm. to it. I'm not going to go into politics mm. of that. Mm. But the biggest support one needs is funding. If it were easy to get those funds to do what we have to do, more of the African stories have been told. I've been approached by a lady in Kenya who's supposed to work in a project before the year ends. Already the script is there, everything is there. I'm supposed to go shoot there, but we don't mind, have money for it. Now, Having that in mind, you have your own people, your own people 
that every day talk to you, ask you for flavors, and, 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 and. When you ask them for two hours of their time to come support you, to sit and watch what you have done, they don't show up. Who comes is the foreigners. Do you get my point? So support needed mostly is fans. So before I go into my last question, which, you know, I, I know, you know, you've, you've worked tirelessly, you know, for this. Where do you see for Ikeme Funa going next? Or what vision, what vision is there? do you have for it? The first one, we were just waiting for this launch. For this launch, I call it a launch. Amazon Prime is waiting for it. And other channels that I'm not going to mention now are also waiting for it. But where I see it personally is in Toronto. Right. At the islands. Right. Awesome. And we are submitting for it. Because it's about time that Africa's voice has to be heard. Not Nigerian voice, not South mm. African voice, but African voice. Also, we're still looking on funds. We want to attend, to go to each and every country in Africa, 55 of them, and do a screening of this movie. Because this movie talks to all Africans. But as time goes on, we'll get to that. So if you are out there in another country in Africa, we are coming yes, for yes, Ikeme yes. Funa. <laughs> now in closing, I want you to give any advice to upcoming actors, yeah. um, you know, out there, young people. Mm. I know you do a lot of work with mm. young people. I want you to give any form of advice or words of encouragement, you know, for them. On, on that note, when they brought me those youth, young people in Nigeria to act in the movie, I was like, guys, how did you know? Come here, my children. <laughs> uh, the road is not easy. As I say, this is a 20-year dream. If you're going to dream of me sleeping, I was trying. My first official movie that I produced, as I was saying, it was in 2010. It didn't make it anywhere because of technicalities. And I know what was wrong, but it was a learning curve for so it's not an easy road, but you have to be persistent. You have to knock and knock and knock. Attend things. Use mm. social media for your own good. There's a lot of connections. Social media is not just for joy. <laughs> or for gossip. For gossip. <laughs> but it is for important things. Most of the business dealings I have is people that I meet on social media. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mama Madam Kay. Black Queen Africa. Africa, yes. I salute you. I honor you. you. I know there's a lot in there, and I can't wait, you know, to see your ne next film. But I can't wait to see you in Toronto uh, as well. T Toronto, Toronto, I'm coming. I'll, 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 I'll be holding that horn like this. Yes. yes. I'd like to give this to my, to my late father. To my yeah. mother, to my family, to my Mama Kay. This, but remember, you, 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 you are here with us here now in Kylie. <laughs> uh? So don't you get there and think, do I know them? Uh -huh. So remember, we... we, we of course. So pre now. when you prepare that uh, speech, speech... I must remember this day. This day. This day. In front this of day, Bethlehem Movie House. house. <laughs> so remember the small beginnings. Well, I think Thank that's so all much. we've got time yeah. for. And... We've been having a chat with this amazing woman. Until next time, we'll be right back to share more stories of those who are impacting lives across Africa. People like her, people like you, we want to hear your story. Till next time, stay safe, God bless, much love. Thank you, Mama Kay.